dudes make feeling uncomfortable and seeing all this negativity and feeling the demonic spirits in that office, it was a very uncomfortable feeling for me. And um, that's when I had a reality check of like where I ha how far I've come in like a short period of how far God has brought me in a sh very short period of time. And um, you know, I got I got my first solid result. You know, I'm I'm used to people, um, I'm gonna say this, urinating on me and telling me it's raining outside. And um, if you can you know, understand what that means. Um, these men have told me they had me, and yesterday I got my first result of seeing that these men that God has placed in my life, they had me. And um, I walked in there, and all I had to go through was we sat there for a minute, but then once they, I guess somebody realized that we was sitting in there, um, a lady comes in the back and she was like, she was like, Raiden, and I was like, yes ma'am. And she said, look, this lady's fixing to give you some papers or something to that extent. Fill out them papers. I'm going to handle the rest. So I was like, wow. So this lady brings me a piece of paper. It takes five minutes to sign this little, fill out this paper for interstate compact. No questions asked, nothing. And I turn this paper in. And she's like, okay, you can go. I never, I never talked to an officer. I never sat down in an office with nobody. Don't nobody have no information about me still. And um, God just showed me like if He is for if He is for me like it really doesn't matter what what little problems I'm facing like He is an overcomer. Amen. And um, so I got my first results of actually somebody telling me they got me and really not going off into it about how they got me. I seen that these people really have me and God through these people is got me. And so um, I, I encountered that on my own personal part of my testimony to add um, for yesterday. And, um, and then we went to this outreach last night. And I had the time of my life playing basketball with these little kids that I could see didn't have nobody in their life. And watching Pat with these little fellas was an amazing experience. And um, so I just, I really want to encourage anybody that hasn't went to, if nothing else, just come pull up and see what's going on. Because the love that is expressed is, is, is amazing. And um, seeing these, these people who are who are less fortunate and trapped in the grips of their mess. Um, and to see like God shine through this guy right here, like out there on this basketball court and seeing how these young men are like grabbing onto him. So then I kind of picked up what he was putting down and I started smack talking with him. And the next thing you know, these little kids was like latched on to me also. And I was like, wow, you know, my own kids don't want nothing to do with me. But something in me now is making these little young men, like, they was literally, like, latched onto me, three or four of them at the time. And it was just amazing. It was the best It was the best high I've ever experienced in my life. Um, I've never had a drug that made me feel so good and lasted so long. Like, I still feel good about it. Like, right now, talking about it, I feel I have that same feeling again. So, like, I just want to encourage anybody. Like if if you if your heart's not in it, like find a way to get it there. And, um, Amen. Amen. Look look through the eyes of your heart and listen through the ears in your heart and uh, like press in and like I pray that everybody gets a taste of what I'm beginning to experience and I share with that. Amen. 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 <laughs> yeah, you're a priest, bro. Yeah. You're a priest. No, a priest in nature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, man. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. This is good. I'm at it.
All right, Lord God, we come before you right now with a bow to heads and humble hearts. First and foremost, if there's anything on our hearts that we need to be forgiven for right now, Lord God, I ask that you forgive us. Lord God, forgive us. And I just want to thank you for making that possible, for, for being forgiven, for giving your son down on his cross for our sins. Lord God, if there's any sins that we're unaware of committing, Lord God, please forgive us again also and bring them to our awareness so that we don't allow them to happen again. Lord God, I pray that if there's any eyes or ears that need to be open to see and hear your voice and to know your will for their life and my life, Lord God, I just ask that you open them eyes and ears now. And Lord God, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for everything you're doing in my life, everything you've done in my life, and everything you're going to do ahead of time. Um, and Lord God, I just want to thank you for these men that are that are inspiring me to, to keep me pushing and keep me pressing forward. And um, I want to pray a hedge of protection this morning around our, our friends and our family and keep them safe and you know, whisper to the whisper to the hearts what we might can't get our, our our words to get to their ears, and just let them know we love them, and that just like we're doing this for us, we're doing it for them too. And Lord God, right now I want to I want to pray for all of our enemies. Lord yeah. God, show us how to forgive them. Yeah, the love. Lord God, not only show us how to forgive them, but Lord God, you forgive them for whatever wrongdoings they may have done to us, and bless them. Bless him in yeah. the name of Jesus. Pour out love. Pour out love. Lord God, Lord. lead us and guide us today. Guide our footsteps. Guide our words. Guide our actions. Guide everything about our life today. And help us in doing the commission and spreading your word, Lord God. Lord God. Ask these things in the beautiful, mighty name, name of Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Sure, my guy. Okay to be nervous. Uh, but the Bible tells us uh, we do not have a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. I knew it. So right now, I just uh, I thank God for the um, sound mind. But uh, I cast out and uh, bind away the spirit of fear right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name. Um, all my life, it's been a struggle. It's been uh real tough for me. Uh, my mom and dad took care of me the best of their ability, but um, it was always rough growing up. <coughs> Thank you, Jesus. But um, once I hit uh, 10th grade, I quit school so I can help my dad out so it wouldn't be all on him and everything. And uh, He was always in his addiction, so um, it was, uh, he always didn't have the money that he needed to take care of the bills, so that's why I quit school and everything. And uh, Well, since he was in his addiction, I wound up, you know, uh, son follows his daddy's footsteps. So I wound up in addiction too. So really me quitting school didn't help us out on bills. It just gave me addiction. <laughs> and, uh, but, well, yeah, everything, I've done what I could really. But once uh, I hit, let's see, once I turned 19, I met my baby's mama in Cartersville, Georgia. Haley Warren is her name. We got three beautiful kids, uh, Heaven, Gracie, and Gavin. They're all grown up now. And um, But I've had it always had it pretty rough from moving from place to place. Always, when I was growing up, we would move from place to place, and uh, I would I always felt like I had to have acceptance to hang around with people. So I would join gangs here and there, just uh, be doing stupid stuff, just to feel like uh, somebody accepted me. But all along, he's always accepted me, and I never realized that until I went to Teen Challenge. I went to Teen Challenge, and uh, well, let me back step a little bit. Uh, my, my baby's mama, she uh, told me she didn't want to be with me no more when I was, um, I want to say 10 years ago, 12 years ago. <coughs> and so I moved back to my um, sister's house. And so my kids got taken away through that. And then two years after that, my dad dies. Well, five years after that, my mama dies. And I've just been going down through there. My mama didn't pass away. There wasn't nothing holding me back. I was, didn't want to hear nothing nobody had to say. I was going from yard to yard, stealing stuff out of people's yards, robbing people. And it just, uh, it was all going downhill from there. And um, it was pretty rough when my mom and dad passed away. Uh, I still deal with that and everything. So I just started stealing all the cars I could. And um, I wound up getting in trouble for it. I stole a car. I got rid of the car and everything, but I was walking down the road one day and they had caught me, uh, they pulled me over walking and my dumb self. I still had the, uh, the credit card in my back pocket. So I was like, I can't do it. And uh, well, they said, this credit card shows me different. <coughs> so I went to jail and uh, they was gonna let me out on probation, but I knew that God had put this on my heart that I needed help. So I told him I wanted to go to Teen Challenge. And they sent me to Teen Challenge and I completed the program, <clears throat> graduated, was coming back as an intern. But I, uh, I've been gone for 18 months. I just wanted to go spend a little time with my family. So I go down to spend time with my family and they didn't have no food, so I, was, I had a food stamp card on me. So I said, let's go to the uh, grocery store and I'll get us something to eat. So we go to the grocery store on the way back from the grocery store. Uh, we had a green light. We went to turn left at the green light and um, a truck doing 75, a Dodge 3500 T-Bone is doing 75. So it threw my brother-in-law, he was the driver. It threw him 75 foot in front of the car. About killed him on, on impact. He was almost dead right there. 
<clears throat> it was the worst wreck in the history of Carroll County of all every wreck that's ever happened there. <clears throat> and uh, we flipped eight times. We had my niece in the car, my sister in the car. Thank God nothing happened to them. All they come out with is my niece had one. She had stitches in her head, eight stitches. <clears throat> but um, God had his hands on us the whole time. Um, I just want y'all to know that uh, whatever mess you was in out there, God is always in, with you in the fire. Jesus is always beside you. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. <clears throat> and um, but the uh, um, the ambulance got there and everything, and they it took them it smushed the car from the very top of the roof all the way down to the uh, bottom of the window. So I was somehow I was the only one in the car. Everybody else, I I don't know how they got. I think they climbed out the back glass. My sister and my niece climbed out the black glass and like I said it slung my brother while I was 75 foot in front of the car and I was smushed down in the vehicle um, it took them five and a half hours to cut me out and I kept hearing this voice it was my niece's voice saying Uncle Eric, Uncle Eric, are you okay? I kept hearing that the whole time well after the wreck was done and over with and everything um, I asked my sister she come to the hospital afterwards I asked my sister, I said uh the only thing that kept me alive was her keep saying my voice. She was like, what are you talking about? I said, um, I said, Emily kept saying my voice. Uncle Eric, Uncle Eric. She said, she only said your name one time. So, <laughs> all glory to God. That was, God kept saying my name in her voice to keep me alive. Mm. And I'm just so thankful for everything that's God doing in my life. And uh, <clears throat> So, from there, I... Um, I didn't wind up going back to Teen Challenge because um, I, was, I was in the hospital for three weeks. Was, uh, to be honest, I was just a, a little discouraged with God because uh, I just went through the whole program and uh, been chasing God the whole time. But there was only one problem with that. I didn't fully surrender. And I'm here to tell everybody, you have to fully surrender to be able to fight off the evil things, the uh, demons, anything that comes at you out there. If you don't fully surrender, the first time something comes at you, you're going to fall into that temptation. Them little compromises are going to hit you so hard, and you're going to take it because you didn't fully surrender. You ain't got God's strength to get through the things that you need to get through. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll go back down through there. The, I get a check for um, $17,000 from the wreck. And I'm with this with this girl who I thought loved me, but um, it wasn't love. It was just uh, she just wanted the money I had. <coughs> but my sister kept coming down. The one Amanda Graham, I'm so thankful for Amanda Graham. Uh, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here today doing what I'm doing right now. She come down there. She was a vessel of God to come down there and pull me out of my mess. <coughs> but she comes down to Rockmore and picks me up and takes me up here and she said you come up here to the rehab that we're in that I'm in this is how she got me I, just, I ain't gonna lie my weakness is women <laughs> she says uh, she said you can come up here to the rehab I'm in um, it's co-ed <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like alright uh, uh, let's go <laughs> right out <laughs> you know so I get up there and ain't need no bed open I'm like, okay, okay, so I go stay with one of her friends for a few days. She's like, we're going to get you in somewhere. All right. So um, Ronnie Price was with, over there with my sister, so she gives Amanda Bobby's number. <clears throat> and then Bobby, um, I call him the next day. He gives me an application to the Center of Hope. Thank you, God. <clears throat> well, I put in the application. He's like, I'll be there at 12 o'clock to get you. Really gonna happen. <laughs> so I look in the refrigerator and there's um, like one shot of Jack Daniels left. So I get, I'm like, I'm going, I'm going to take it. So I took it, shot Jack Daniels, went to Center Hope. I ain't done nothing since. I'll go to God. The, um, yeah, Center Hope done so much for me. I, I love Center Hope. Um, it really changed my life. I, I can honestly say that I, I fully surrendered this time. So any attack that that evil one comes at me with, I'm ready for it. And uh, I'm just so thankful for Abel, everything that Abel's doing out here. 
I'm just, I'm going to continue walking with Jesus. Uh, I just want everybody to know that Jesus is in the fire with us. out of Daniel 3. King Nebuchadnezzar built a gold statue, 90 feet high and 9 feet thick. And 9 feet thick. He, he set it up upon Dura Plan in the province of Babylon. <clears throat> he then ordered all the important leaders in the province, everybody who was anybody, to the dedication ceremony of the statue. They all came for the dedication. All the important people and took their places before the statue that Nebuchadnezzar had erected. A herald then proclaimed in a loud voice, Attention, everyone, every color, every race, color, and creed, listen. When you hear the band strike up, all the trumpets and trombones and tubas and bartones, <clears throat> the drums and cymbals, fall to your knees and worship the gold statue that the king Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Anyone who does not kneel in worship shall be thrown immediately into the uh, roaring furnace. The band started to play, a huge band equipped with all the musical instruments of Babylon. And everyone, every race, color, and creed fell to their knees and worshiped the gold statue that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Just then, some Babylon, Babylonian fortune tellers stopped stepped up and accused the Jews. They said, King, King Nebuchadnezzar, long live the king. You you give strict orders, O king, that when the big band started playing, everyone had to fall to their knees and worship the ghost statue. And whoever did not go to their knees and worship, it had to be pitched into a roaring furnace. Well, there are some Jews here, there are some Jews here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, <coughs> whom you have placed in high positions in the providence of Babylon. These men are ignoring you, O king. They do not respect your gods, and they won't worship the gold statue you set up. Fierce King Nebuchadnezzar ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to, to be brought in. When the men were brought in, Nebuchadnezzar asked, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you don't respect my God and refuse to worship the goat statue I have set up. I am giving you a second chance. But from now on, when the big band strikes up, you must go to your knees and worship the statue I have made. If you don't worship it, you will be pitched into a roaring furnace, no questions asked. Who is the God who can rescue you from my power? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> Your threats means nothing to us. If you throw us into the fire, the God we serve can rescue us from your roaring furnace and anything else you might cook up, O king. <laughs> but even if he doesn't, it wouldn't make a bit of difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods or worship the ghost statue you set up. Nebuchadnezzar, his face purple with anger, cut off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Cut off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace fired up seven times hotter than usual. He ordered some strong men from the army to tie them up, hands and feet, and throw them into the roaring furnace. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, bound hand and foot, fully dressed from head to toe, were pitched into the roaring fire. Because the king was in such a hurry and the furnace was so hot, flames from the furnace killed the men who carried Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to it. While the fire raged around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, suddenly King Nebuchadnezzar jumped up in alarm and said, Don't we throw three men? <clears throat> Didn't we throw three men bound and foot into the fire? That's right, O king, they said. But look, he said, I see a fourth man walking around freely in the fire, completely 
unarmed, and the fourth man looks like the Son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar went to the door of the roaring furnace and called in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most servants of the high God, come out here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out of the fire. All the important people of the government leaders and king's counselors gathered around to examine <clears throat> examine them and discovered that the fire had been so much as touched three men. Not a hair singed, not a scorched mark on their clothes, not even the smell of smoke on them. Mm -hmm. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angels and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They ignored the king's orders and laid their bodies on their on the line rather than serve or worship any god but their own. Therefore, I issue a decree. Anyone, anywhere, of any race, color, or creed who says anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be ripped to pieces limb by limb and their horses horses torn down houses torn down <clears throat> sorry about that <clears throat> they there has never been a god who can pull off a rescue like this then the king prompted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon I just want everybody to know the uh, god is with us everywhere we go y'all uh, you know Jesus has got something good for each and every one of us. I just want to encourage y'all to keep your head up and uh, make sure you always put God first. It says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all else will be added. Just let him provide for you. That's about all I got. Amen. job bro thanks, thanks. there's so many guys in here when I when I hear that story it reminds me of you and you went through the fire of life of addiction you come out on the other side and you I mean hearing your testimony man just knowing you the last year that I've known you through the Center of Hope and since you've been here I would have never known any of the stuff that you talked about because all I see is the mighty man of God. Amen. That's right. You know? And uh, I think it's so important, man. I was I was listening to something this morning about, talked about they were in the fire. You know, and I was listening to a teaching on the baptism of fire. And I think that's so important. We keep talking about it. I want to I wanna go into that just a look, just briefly. I know we got like five minutes. No, we got like 15. Okay, cool. Yeah. So the Bible... It talks about talks about three different baptisms. There's the baptism into the body when we get born again. We take our place in the body. And some of you guys in the house, we've been talking about this. The transitional house. But there's a baptism in the body where we take our place. Immediately we take our place in the body of Christ. Whatever God's called us into in seed form. You know, if you're called into a fivefold ministry office, you're not going to step into the off that office immediately. There's going to be some training. There's going to be some prepping. God's going to build you up, character building and stuff like that. But you take that position immediately. In that moment that we receive Christ, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, and that's primarily for us. The Bible describes it as a fountain inside of us. And really, we can tap into that fountain through life's trials, tribulations, struggles, things that we go through. When we need peace, we can tap into peace. When we need joy, we can tap into joy. When we need long-suffering, meekness, goodness, kindness, all that stuff is immediately available, and it becomes a part of who we are. So that's the baptism in the body. So everybody has the Holy Spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit within. So you go from there, there's the baptism of water. And don't, from reading the book of Acts, it doesn't have to necessarily be in this order because we see in Acts 10 they received the Holy they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and then they got baptized in water but just for the sake of defining you have the baptism into the body and then you have the water baptism 
And water baptism is basically, I believe there is a something spiritually that happens. Um, but primarily it's just to show to the world that as you go down in the water that the old man is dead. And as you come up, it's showing that you're walking in the newness of life. And, you know, we have an example in Scripture. There's a couple of different examples, but one of the ones I like is when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. They came out of the world, and the Egyptians were chasing them, right? And the water parted. They went through the water. And what happened when they went through the water? Yeah. When they got to the other side, the water came down on what? The enemy. The enemy yeah. So the enemy that was chasing them when they went down in the water... When they came out of the water, it was no longer chasing them. So I, I believe there is, with rev, with that revelation, if you have that revelation as you go down in the water, that you're leaving stuff behind, I believe that it can actually happen. Uh, I believe there's power in water baptism. So I believe it's more than just an outward sign. I believe it is something spiritual. That's a whole other teaching. So water baptism, you got baptism in the body, water baptism. And then now I want to read from Matthew chapter 3. And you have the baptism of fire. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I've seen, man, I'm telling you guys that receive, because all, the Bible says all you have to do is receive it. That's it, by faith. I don't believe that you have to speak in tongues to show that you receive it. I believe that we receive it by faith. Now, tongues is part of it. I mean, you can, that could happen then. It could happen later on. Um, but it is available for everyone as well. But to, re to actually receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's just by faith. It says if you ask for the Holy Spirit in Luke 11, he'll give it to you. So we receive that by faith. Now, I do believe that the same way, and I like to give the illustration, when you go down, if I, w if I were to go down into the water and say I had this on right here, I had my jeans and my shirt on, when I came back up, my clothes would be saturated in water, right? So when we go down in the, in, to the spiritual baptism, baptism of the Holy Spirit, the same way our natural clothes get saturated in water, when we get baptized in the Holy Spirit, we get saturated in the Holy Spirit. Where it goes from He's inside of us, and it's primarily for us, to where He comes out, and now we're just clothed, and we're drenched in the Holy Spirit. And now this is for the world, and this is for all those that we come in contact with every day. Amen? Amen. And like one Amen. of the things that Eric said, I mean, it's being 100% sold out and on fire for God is the key. If you really want to step into the fullness of everything that he has for you, all the different things that are available as sons, uh, one of the main things I think, or two of the main things, you know, the baptism of fire, number one, it's going to burn up the chaff, it's going to burn up the things, the hindrances mm -hmm. in our life that's been holding us back, that's been keeping us from pressing fully in. It could be unbelief, it could be fear, it could, have, it could just be just, you know, a dozen different yeah. things. Bitterness. Just bitterness, unforgiveness, just just fill in the blank. You know, we all have things that we've dealt with in the past, maybe even dealing with right now. But uh, it's that. It burns up the things, the hindrances. But it's also a fire that's going to cause us to burn for Jesus. It's going to cause us to want to tell somebody about Jesus. It's going to cause us to want to share our testimony, to share our story, to share Jesus, to share the gospel, to lay hands on the sick. You know, just really just hungry for the things of God. How many of y'all have encountered that? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, and it's not a one-time thing. And that's why I always I like to keep bringing it up. Because in Ephesians 5, mm -hmm. it says to be continually filled with the Spirit. That's right. So whether this, to, today as we pray, whether this is the first time you received it. Or this is just something we're going to do, guys. This is moving forward. And, and, and since I've been here, we do this often. And I think it's important because we could always use... A fresh stir and we could always use a fresh fire that's right amen? amen but the other one is just to burn for jesus mm -hmm. you know as you go out and you start looking for those opportunities and we study so many of the pioneers of the faith and they all go back to the same common denominator of praying in the holy spirit being baptized in the spirit and then taking it that next next step further for me i got alone with god i was alone i was in prison i was in my bunk I had my blanket up over my head. And next thing you know, I was asking for it, and I was in faith, and I was believing for it. And next thing you know, man, I started praying in the Spirit. And I lost track of time, guys, I'll be honest. And 
when I finally took that blanket down and I looked up at the clock, it was like over an hour later. I didn't even realize it, you know, but there was something about that prayer language. You know, there's so many different, we've studied these four different primary things, but there's hundreds, there's probably, there's a book that I read, it's like 72 reasons for praying in the spirit. So there's a lot of different things that we tap into, but I think the main thing, guys, is really, you know, Eric was talking about how God has this purpose and plan for all of our lives, and that's one of the ways that we can really start, it says when we pray in an unknown tongue, we, in the spirit, we pray mysteries, and that's one of the ways we can start to tap into that plan that God has for our lives, you know, and it's not, it's not weird, it's not just for the super Christian. Jesus said in Mark 16 in the Great Commission, he said believers will speak with new tongues. And one of those avenues is, is literally for personal edification. It's to cause us to burn. You know, Paul told Timothy, it's the last book that Paul wrote, Second Timothy, and he was writing to encourage his young pastor that he raised up. And he, he encouraged him. He said, stir up the gift that was placed inside of you through the laying on of hands. And that's one of the gifts that we'll see in Scripture that's released through the laying on of hands. And when you when you read that word where it says stir up the gift, it literally means to fan into flames. That's right. So I think about, you know, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So what happens if we're out there, we're burning for Jesus, and it, it, it could happen. I mean, <coughs> we see it in Scripture. We've seen how they, they didn't bow, you know, to the enemy, and they ended up in the furnace. And it could be a spiritual furnace. It could be, the Bible talks about fiery trials. You know? Um, is it possible to be in the fire and not be consumed by the fire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. As a matter of fact, this is the encouragement this morning just after listening to the message. Man, we need to, we need to press into this thing because mm -hmm. the fact that we're doing what we're doing, that we're going into the enemy's camp, we're pulling people out, we're in the jails, we're in the streets, we're in the highways, we're in the byways. We're leaving a footprint of the gospel and the kingdom everywhere we go. Man, there's going to be opposition. There's going to be opposition. But let me tell you something. If you're on fire, you can go through the fire, and you're just right. going to get hotter. That's right. Come on. And you yeah. can come out and not even smell like smoke. I'm telling you, like a lot of, a lot of places, just like I was just sharing with Eric, I'll go into places, you know, cleaned up and, and clean cut and shaved and automatically people were like are you a uh, are you law enforcement or are you a, you look like you're in the military or you look like a doctor or you and I'm just like no nah, I'm just I was out there in the street you know wild and just like everybody else was and but Jesus can literally clean you up and bring you out where you don't even smell like smoke Amen. and your gift I'm telling you, your gift will make room for you and it's going to bring you before great men you know, and when, he, and when you share your testimony and you share your story, because everybody in here has got a testimony. Everybody in here has got a story. And they, when people see your walk and the consistency of your walk on the job sites and these different crews that we're working with and different companies that we're working with and different homes that we're going into, and that opportunity presents itself, and you begin to share your story and your testimony, just like Eric this morning, people are going to be blown away. And people are going to want to gravitate to Jesus because of your story. Amen. And people are going to want what you have. And that's the whole reason for our testimony, man. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's right. That person that you're, going to, that you're going to come in contact with today on the work site, at the grocery store, at the restaurant, wherever you're at, be intentional, be listening. Holy Spirit, you have something for this person. And the Holy Spirit might just say, yeah, just tell them that Jesus loves them. Our Holy Spirit might just tell you to open up the door. Have you ever opened up the door for somebody? And yeah. it's, it's just like, it seems like these days it's something, you know, spectacular and new, but I'm kind of old school. My dad taught me to open up the door for people, you know, so. But just doing little acts of kindness like that, man, you'd be surprised what that can do. But just looking for those opportunities today. And listen, man, like, I'm telling you, as you open up, that river, as that river starts flowing through you and, 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 and praying in the spirit, and just light, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be loud and weird with it. We don't want to, I mean, I guess if the Holy Spirit tells you to do it, do it. But most of the time, I really feel like it's going to be more of a whisper and silent. 
And there's been times, most of the time I'm in here, wherever you see me, if I'm in a church service, especially if I'm about to get up and do something like this and share, man, I'm praying in the Spirit under my breath, and I'm being intentional. I'm trying to listen to what the Holy Spirit wants to say in the meeting or in the, if it's a meeting like this or if it's a meeting out in the marketplace. All right, Holy Spirit, what do you want to say? Because it's His words that's going to impact people, right? His words, Jesus says, the words that I speak are spirit and are life. So I want to speak His words. I don't want to speak my words. It's His story, not my story, right? It's to give Him glory. But I'm telling you guys that that river that's opened up is the channel through which He speaks. And when he speaks, things begin to change. I, I run into people all the time and, and years later, and they're like, I remember when you said this, this, and this. And I was just like, oh, really? And they're like, yeah. And it impacted their life. It changed their life. You know, just by releasing the words of life it can change the trajectory of someone's life, their history, their destiny. It can impact them, their families. I've seen it. Their families, their children, their children's children. Like, it literally... The word of God is like the word says, it's rivers of living water. So let's read this real quick. And because we're out of time. Y'all, that was a quick 15 minutes. Look at that. Wow. Um, target time again. Yeah. Wow. See, God dwells in eternity. And when you get over in those rivers, you get over into that. And then you become the extra Chris, <laughs> as Josh calls it. Extra Chris. <laughs> the Holy Spirit puts that super on your natural. Yeah. You know, you don't know when to shut up. And that's why someone has to remind you when to shut up. Hey, when I was incarcerated, we would uh, we weren't fancy. We didn't have the the wireless mics. We had these the old school mics, and we would literally hold on to the cord. And when it was about that time, we would start reeling the cord in. You know, and it's about time to start reeling that cord in, right? I know what time it is. All right, here we go. Let's stand up. So Jesus is stepping on the scene, man. And he's going in front of John. He's about to, John's about to bapt, baptize him. That's a whole other teaching. But Matthew, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Amen. 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 Jesus is the baptizer. That's right. His winnowing fan in his hand, he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. That's what we were talking about earlier. Now remember, Jesus is the baptizer. Right? Jesus is the baptizer. All we are is the messenger. In Luke chapter 11, it says, I say to you, ask and it will be given. Start with verse 9. Seek and you'll find, knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and he who knocks it will be opened. If any son asks for bread from the father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So I believe when you receive the Holy Spirit, not, not at the new birth, but in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it's just you just ask. It's a gift. It's just like salvation. You ask, and he says when you ask, you receive. Amen? Amen. So let's do that today. Let's just raise up our hands. I'm not going to single anybody out. Let's just raise up our hands to heaven. Just like we're about to receive a gift. Like we're about to receive a gift. So let's pray this. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you, we thank you for your promise. For your promise. If, we ask, if we ask, we'll receive. We'll receive. If we seek, if we seek, we'll find. We'll find. If we knock, if we knock, it shall be opened. It shall be opened. Your word says, Your word says if, we ask if we ask for the baptism, for the, baptism the, saturation, the saturation, the burning, the burning of the Holy Spirit. Of the Holy Spirit. We will receive. We will receive. So today, so today, we ask in faith. We ask in faith. And we believe. And we believe in faith. That we receive. That we receive. 
the baptism, the baptism of fire, the saturation, the saturation, saturation, the burning, the burning, flowing of the living water, the voice, the voice inside of us, the rivers of living water, flowing out of us, flowing out to touch the world, to touch the world. We believe, we believe, we receive, we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. And we just say thank you. Thank you. Thank Let's you. give him some praise, guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now go out and be the hands and feet everywhere you go. Be an expectation that when you step out on the word, he's going to accompany the word. With miracle signs and wonders everywhere you go today in Jesus name for the sake of the kingdom. I didn't make any Amen. Amen. I just get up and put my pants on and say yes sir. You had to be willing and agree to just say yes sir. That's all I did. That's all I did. Hey listen, your yes, your yes to Jesus is your automatic no to everything else.